This week, I'm trading gold, I'm watching the dollar, and I'm watching the indices going into the CPI report that comes out on Wednesday. Let's jump into the analysis of the week ahead, some trading setups, my trades, and more. Let's jump into it. All right, guys, welcome back to another video. So first, before we jump into the charts, I just wanna alert you guys to some of the major news events that are occurring this week to keep you guys informed so that you're not blindsided. That is the goal of this channel is to help you guys out in your trading as well as just sort of sort of share my own journey. Uh, CPI comes out on Wednesday at 8.30 a.m. We have uh, the year over year, the month over more, a month, and of course, core CPI, uh, which all of these will be very interesting, but core, I would say, has been the stickiest and most notable to watch. So we'll watch to see how that plays out. Of course, we'll have coverage and we will be live streaming that event. But keep an eye open as well for Thursday where we have the Bank of England coming out with their official bank rate and commentary should be a very, very interesting move for the pound pairs, which maybe we'll discuss a little bit in today's video. Of course, we also have core PPI and PPI numbers coming out on Thursday. This is going to give us an insight into the producer's price index, which is also a very important measurement of inflation. And we have unemployment claims that will also come out at the same time. Friday, of course, final thing, we have GDP for the UK uh, and we have the preliminary UO Michigan, I believe, consumer sentiment. So should be a very interesting week and volatility should be relatively high. So going into this week, where am I positioned? That's what everybody wants to know on my videos, Nick, are you buying? Nick, are you selling? Please remember, this is not financial advice. I'm not here to share signals. I'm not doing the work for you. I'm sharing my trading journey, what I'm trading, uh, and I am currently long gold. So I picked up long uh, a long position on gold last week here, uh, and you can see we're floating a little bit of profit. So at this point, we are seeing a, uh, a $525 profit on this particular trade. Um, so we'll see if this one wants to continue, and uh, I'll do some analysis here with you guys. So I bought it on a pullback. Let's go to our one chart view. So uh, I, I ended up going long on a pullback and I feel like my entry ended up being a very, very good spot here on this chart. Price pulled back into consolidation. I trade ETFs, so I, I can't trade gold CFDs uh, as I'm a US client and to trade on a regulated broker, there are barriers here in the United States, unfortunately for that. So I traded uh, GLD here long on a pullback into support. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking for this thing to continue up. And, and there's a couple reasons that I keep talking about the regional banks uh, have been something of, of, a, of a story here to pay attention to. We've had several bank collapses. We had a little bit of confidence come back into the market, which gave a pullback here, but I don't necessarily think that that story is completely done. I think there may be some rocky roads ahead, which could cause gold to shoot up on fear movements. We've seen that be a strong catalyst for gold recently, and it could continue to be the case. Um, so the regional banks also, we've got the debt crisis situation or the, the debt ceiling uh, situation, uh, which also could uh, put some upward pressure on gold as people could be a little bit fearful around that event. But then also the Federal Reserve on uh, Wednesday made some hints at potentially pausing. And if they do pause, I think that gives a runway to gold to the upside and could break through the highs. So I'm positioned long, that's my take on it. Here's your trading view version uh, of XAU USD here. Same concept, I picked it up right around here long, around 2005, and uh, I am looking for a move back to the previous highs. And we'll be watching to see if we can actually get a breakout, potentially on that CPI report. We'll watch that one closely going into this week. I am bullish. I already picked it up long. I shared this signal inside of our Discord channel. And if you're not already inside of the Discord channel, make sure to join and, and get access to all the trading signals and stuff that are coming out. We have a link down below in the description that can connect you there uh, to get access to that. Uh, and you can, you can check out all the different trades that I'm sharing. We also have Frank and Ivan, who if you're watching the live streams, you know uh, you're familiar with them. They come on and they do commentary with me. So I am watching gold. That's my current position open. Uh, and I also wanted to talk a little bit about the pound pairs. I mentioned that, of course, on Thursday, we have uh, the Bank of England. And we talked about this on live. Frank made a good point, I think, uh, possible pullbacks to this 1.258 to 1.255 range look very intriguing. And we've talked about this a little bit in terms of a comparison of the inflation situation with these uh, these two central banks, the Fed and of course the Bank of England, we see a very interesting divergence. We talked about this briefly on the live stream here today. The red here is the uh, the Bank of England, or, or I'm sorry, the UK, experiencing 10.1% inflation as of the most recent CPI filing from the UK. Well, then you also have the US and you have Europe. 
Both of these have still high inflation above their targets by a large range. Of course, 2% is not nearly 5%, but it's still a lot better than 10.1%. Now, why does this matter? Well, the Bank of England almost certainly, I'm expecting as most traders and investors are, for the Bank of England to be very hawkish. They have to sort of do something about this 10.1%. They're at double digit inflation. And so I think that that causes the pound to continue to be bullish. Now, this is of course my opinion and I, I can be wrong about this sometimes I have an idea and it goes completely the other way so transparency is key on my YouTube channel I do this every day trust me I get it wrong sometimes and I'm not here to tell you the secret magical formula and sell you a $2,000 course it's not what I'm here to do I'm here sharing my opinions my take on this and I think stacking the probabilities looking at this I'm interested in a long position on some of the pound pairs. I really like pound against the Japanese yen. We'll go into that in here in just a second. I wanna also show you retail sentiment on the pound. Very notable. The uh, retail crowd is very short biased on the pound against the US dollar, which I find very, very interesting uh, to mention. Of course, when the retail crowd is shorting something, as we know, oftentimes they're shorting excellent movers to the upside and they're buying things that go down, down, and down, right? So we pay attention to that positioning in terms of retail client. I find that very interesting that as we trend higher, you know, retail is betting against the pound. Also guys, I wanna take a quick second to remind you that we are doing a $500 Bitcoin giveaway right now. So $500 in uh, Bitcoin. If you guys want to join the giveaway, it's free to join. There's no, nothing that you have to do super special. All you have to do is click the link that will be dropped in the description. If you'd like to join the giveaway, uh, you're going to click uh, the, the link down below. It's going to take you to a live chat where you can just direct message one of us. You put your name in, you put your email and you click start chat. And it's going to connect you with one of our team members here who will get you added into the giveaway. You also get a chance to meet one of our team members here. If you're a supporter of the channel, be nice to them, say hello, tell them how long you've been watching the videos, that sort of thing. Connect with one of our team members. They'll also get you added into the raffle for the Bitcoin giveaway that we are doing at the end of this month. So don't miss out on that free chance to join. And hopefully one of you guys will win $500 in Bitcoin. It'd be awesome. So um, yeah, I like the pound. I mentioned the pound yen specifically. If the pound yen gives me a pullback here, I missed my idea here last week, of course, kicking myself now because this thing really pulled back beautifully. Um, if it pulls back again, I may have to take a take a stab at going long on pound yen. So I'll watch that uh, specifically. We have that on the watch list as one of the, uh, the top buys here. You have a, a score of five on the edge finder. If you guys are not familiar with this, we do have full videos. You can look up edge finder on YouTube and you'll see all of our stuff. Uh, explanation videos, that sort of thing. What we see here is that across the board, over all the different things that we look at, COT, seasonality, trend, GDP, inflation, unemployment, this software wraps it up into a gift basket and creates sort of a general bias as to what it is uh, thinking about based on all the different uh, components that we are looking at. So right now we have pound yen as a buy, we have euro yen as a strong buy, uh, and we can we can go look at euro yen as well while we're taking a look at yen pairs. Uh, euro JPY here, what's giving it such a strong buy rating? Let's take a look. Well, COT data shows that euro is very long by institutional traders and the Japanese yen is very short by institutional traders. Retail sentiment shows us 73% of the crowd is shorting the euro yen, which gives us a bullish bias. Why? Because retail traders tend to lose money. And if they're shorting it, generally, I'm looking to be more on the bullish side. That's the way we use that indicator. The month of May is also historically, from a seasonal trend perspective, a positive month for the euro Japanese yen. We're early on in May. This could actually be an extra little source of confluence. Now, what you'll notice, the purpose of the edge finder is to combine all of these different aspects and then combine them because one by itself does not tell us the full picture. We try and include a lot of the key things that we pay attention to into the edge finder so that we can build a full complete bias uh, based on that. Now, in terms of economic numbers, we're a bit mixed. GDP growth is better in the, U, uh, the European area as it's 0.1 compared to zero from Japan. Uh, inflation, though, is more under control in Japan. Unemployment is better in, Euro in, in uh, Japan, of course, only at 2.8%. They have very uh, strong uh, labor market. Uh, but then interest rates are much more attractive for the euro. So we kind of get a mixed picture on the economic data front. Uh, 
But again, this is how we tally everything up to give us a score. And so when we look at Euro against the Japanese Yen, which Frank mentioned on the live stream, pullbacks on this one look interesting as well to me based on a fundamental and sentiment uh, bias here. So again, guys, remember, don't forget to get into the Bitcoin uh, giveaway that we are doing. The link will be down below in the description. Just chat with one of our team, uh, team representatives and they will get you added into the giveaway. Thank you very much for tuning into this video and I hope you have a great rest of your day. See ya. Hey, guess what? I just found a video made just for you. Click this video to help with your trading and uh, thanks for watching.